Loctite. Here it is, the right key. Pandora's secrets are all mine. Can I for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. Sophia Blake, who's speaking? Miss Blake, this is Gus McPherson. Can we meet? I'd like to clarify a few points with you. Meet me in an hour at the restaurant Chez Alexandre. We can talk there. Hello, what number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Poste Telegraph, go ahead, please. This is urgent. A telegram for J. Wells, Pinkerton Agency, New York. Take this down. Seek information on a couple. Faye and Jerome Johnson. Stop. Americans. Stop. I've made a note of it. Finished, sir? Goodbye. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Shea Alexander. Can I do anything for you, sir? A table has been booked under the name of Blake, Sophia Blake. I'm here to meet up with the lady. My name is Gus McPherson. This way, please, sir. Miss Blake is waiting for you. If you want to see me, Mr. McPherson, I imagine it's because you've made some headway. Actually, several new occurrences have come to light. Occurrences that require an explanation from you, Miss Blake. I don't understand, Mr. McPherson. What do you mean? What I have learned totally contradicts what you said about the Whites. Who were they really? Ruby White was my younger sister, and Regis White was her husband. I already told you, Mr. McPherson. There is one small detail in all this that you failed to mention. The head of Baphomet. Does that mean anything to you, Miss Blake? I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. McPherson. Should I? 
I do not like to be taken for a fool, Miss Blake. All right. I admit that I wasn't totally honest with you. What do you want to know? Ruby and Regis White never existed. Not as you describe them, anyway. Who are they really? I don't have a sister, Mr. McPherson. Ruby White's real name was Faye Johnson, and Jerome Johnson was her real husband. I hired them, a terrible mistake on my part. But I'm not responsible for their death. Why so many identities? They were professional con artists, Mr. McPherson. As soon as they occupied their room at the Hotel Orfe, they became the Whites, a rich couple on vacation. It was also the signal that they had pulled it off. I was supposed to take delivery of the merchandise. Unfortunately, they were killed in the meantime. What were they doing in Paris? I want the truth, Miss Blake. They were supposed to retrieve the object that was stolen from me. Everything was planned in minute detail. They failed. Their death is a regrettable accident. In the course of my investigations, I was told about a much coveted object the head of Baphomet. Does that mean anything to you? The object has been in my husband's family for generations, Mr. McPherson. I didn't lie to you. Grégoire de Alpin stole it from us. My husband, already weak from his illness, died of sorrow. I now want to retrieve what is rightfully mine and avenge the memory of the man I loved. Then you recognize the existence of this man, Grégoire de Alpin. Who is he really? A madman, blinded by an obsession to possess a supposedly valuable relic, the head of Baphomet. By stealing it, he destroyed my life. Dualpin led my husband to his death, my family to ruin. What exactly is the importance of this object, this head of Baphomet? And why is Dialpin so anxious to get hold of it? I don't really know. My husband was very secretive about the value of the head of Baphomet. As for me, I simply want to retrieve what is rightfully mine. But de Alpin and his lot venerate the relic, surrounded with many legends. Legends of immortality. As you grow old, these legends suddenly become a source of hope, a source of life and death. Who, in your opinion, killed the Whites? The Whites were criminals, Mr. McPherson. They made a foolish mistake. They're dead. Aside from their own carelessness, it can only be because of the man who was behind all of this, Grégoire de Alpin. Do you think the killer will strike again? He would do anything to achieve his aim, Mr. McPherson. Everyone who has crossed his path is in danger. The man is insane. He'll kill again. You must understand that you are the only one who can stop him. We have to put an end to this madness. The object must be found before other heads roll. Go and tell the police what you have told me. Inspector Lebrun will be glad to help you. He'll understand, I'm sure. You still haven't understood. The police do not want a part of this. De Alpin has the Paris police in his pocket, Mr. McPherson. Paris is just a puppet on his string. That is a tragic story, Miss Blake. Why didn't you tell me the truth from the outset? I was alone in Paris, confronted by a fearless enemy. I had to act quickly and discreetly. If you had refused to help me, Mr. McPherson, I would have had no one else. I didn't want to be dishonest with you. Supposing I refuse to continue the investigation? 
It's too late, Mr. McPherson. We can't back out now. The Whites are dead. This doorman is dead. Your patron is dead. Would you be able to live with new victims on your conscience? Innocent people you've met, questioned? Find me the head of Baphomet and the problem will be resolved. Well, if you put it like that, I agree to carry on, Miss Blake. You see, we can reach an agreement, Mr. McPherson. I do not want to be mixed up in all this. No thanks, it's not for me. Way too complicated. Ah, Mr. McPherson, I was just thinking about you. Good to see you again. Have you brought me uh, any more culprits? You've got very little on Helloway, Inspector. Unless you have further evidence, your culprit will soon be a free man, cleared of all suspicion. I have some solid witnesses, and moreover, a very accurate witness sketch. Thank you. You heard his story. Helloway did not kill the Whites. He didn't even know them. Like you, Elwin is a mercenary, Mr. McPherson. Ready to do anything for a little money. I continue to doubt his guilt. You're not a judge, Mr. McPherson. But if you think you can prove his innocence, go ahead. I'm not giving up, Inspector. Quite the opposite. I will be back when I have some news. Fine, McPherson. Come back whenever you want. You know where to find me. these alleys. If anyone lays their hands on me, I certainly don't want to find myself in a cell.
patient with initials G.E. Gracie Eaton? If she was a patient here, that means Helloway is telling the truth.
The egg, symbol of immortality, according to Mrs. Loiseau. Strange, I don't remember Helwine mentioning it. cylinder with the cycle of the phoenix by F. Kaufner written on it. All we need now is a phonograph. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? When the Whites returned on the night of their death, did you notice if a car dropped them off? A smart car. I don't remember the make. Who knows? I was here at the desk. Mallet was taking care of the door. Actually, he saw to all the doors. He was a doorman. One good reason why all the locks throughout the establishment ought to be changed. Mallet is no longer with us, and nobody knows what he has done with the master key. Good. Well, if it's all right with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir. Sir? The man you identified is called Helloin. Jacques Helloin. Can you confirm your statement? Helloin? That's a funny name. And a private eye to boot. Now, I'm surprised. Quite a turnaround, isn't it? That is definitely why he came in here, no mistake. As for what happened to him afterwards, I have no way of knowing. You saw him use the phone. Who did he speak to? Yes, I can confirm that he did try to make a call, but I have no idea who to, especially since he didn't manage to get through. At what moment did Halloween telephone? Oh, this was well after Malais's departure. Actually, it was just before he himself left. See, he tried to make a call, then he left immediately afterwards, without a word of thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. are the detective, are you not? With the arrest of Helloway, this case has taken a different turn. And I'm the only one who can save him from the guillotine. I have to shed light on two investigations at the same time. It is time to decide who you trust, Mr. McPherson. I'm as eager as you to see the end of this nightmare. You associate with the Parisian upper crust, Mrs. Loiseau. Can you tell me about Grégoire d'Alpin? Grégoire de Alpin is an extremely rich banker in Paris. The heir of an old family. You're telling me stuff that everybody knows, Mrs. Loiseau. Give me something paranormal, something occult. De Alepin is a powerful man. He works in the shadows, fascinated by the Middle Ages. He is the founder of the Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross. Will that be enough, Mr. McPherson? He shared this fascination with the Middle Ages with someone else, a woman. For the time being, we'll call her Gracie, if you don't mind. All women have their charm. This fixation with the Middle Ages is probably the old man's only weakness. 
None of this rhetoric will get us anywhere, Mrs. Loiseau. I have to act. If I need any advice from you, I'll know where to find you. Our paths will cross again. I'm sure of it. Did I realize how great an impact dealing with this man would have on me, on my career, on my own destiny? His soul has passed from body to body down through the centuries. The cycle of the phoenix. He is the phoenix, risen from the ashes. He has confided in me the secret of his power, of his riches, the head of Baphomet. I am very familiar with the myth. The Companion's Library featured more than one legend on the subject. Grégoire de Alpin claims to have been in possession of the head since the Middle Ages. He acquired it on behalf of the Knights Templar and kept it after their dissolution. They dare to call my manifesto a scientific fairy tale. They think they are the leading experts in psychoanalysis. Vienna. I will prove my theory to them. I will prove that Grégoire de Alpin is immortal. Slowly but surely, my role in the Alpin's existence has grown in importance. Using hypnosis, I have managed to impose my will upon him, all the while espousing his ambitions. I shall be his successor as the head of the companions. His power, his riches, the Baphomet, it will all be mine. I shall be his heir. The time has come. This evening, the Alpin wishes to see me at his manor. Gracie Eaton, his Adeline, will be there. Tonight, I shall become the greatest. Neither Vienna nor the Alpin can stop me now. The old fool is convinced that I'm ready to receive his soul. Ready to receive his riches, more like. And the influence that comes with them. Then Vienna shall pay for its insolence. If I can be of any assistance, sir? Yes, I... Visitors are not admitted, sir. Would you kindly leave? You are mistaken. I'm not just any old visitor. I've come to make inquiries. Inquiries about the occult. Visitors are not admitted, sir. Would you kindly leave? The knowledge stored here would be impossible to find anywhere else. Even the Sorbonne is but a pale shadow of your great learning. Our library contains knowledge and secrets that cannot even be found at the Sorbonne. The Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross are the most erudite people in the Western world. Does your sealed-off library include books on magic, Kabbalah, divination, tarot, lost civilizations, Mu, Hyperborea, Atlantis, the Holy Grail, and alchemy? Sir, one must not joke with the occult arts. Alchemy. The great work.
How does one attain this great work? Must one first become a supreme brother before contemplating all of its power? Like your SBGDA? Your alchemist? The great Ouroboros has spoken, sir. GDA is no more. The SBK is our supreme leader now. You mean to say Dialpe is no longer your supreme brother? Had his term of office ended, or was he deposed? We are not in the Middle Ages now, sir. It is simply an inheritance by due succession. What does the future hold for a former SB once he has stood down? What became of GDA? GDA is the supreme light. His wisdom becomes accessible to all consciences. The great work has been done. Could you be more explicit, Mr. Dumoulin? If what you say regarding your GDA means that he is no longer among us, that he is dead, then, my friend, you will have the courts to answer to. Glory to the SBK. You seem to know a little too much, Dumoulin. Be careful with your threats. I'm not here to bother you. I already have a suspect for these crimes. But from what you have told me, I could easily have you charged with being an accessory. At the very worst, you might be sent to the nuthouse. What would the police do, eh? What would it gain? They will have to wait the long time for an order from the police chief. Leave before things get worse for you. disappear for ages then turn up without warning. You must be after something. Berenice, you're my little green fairy. With everything we've been through together, I know you'll always be here for me. You're the only person in Paris I can trust, so... Still the same sense of humor. I see the Parisian air inspires you. No, seriously. You're really the only person I can trust. I have one or two questions that I need you to answer. Mac, you know full well I would not refuse you anything. Ask, I'll find you the answer. The other night, before you came around to my place, I had some complications. That guy who got away from me. Well, I caught up with him, but I need to know if you have seen him here before. Helloin. Jacques Helloin. Yes. Well, I think it was the same. He came asking questions a few days ago. I don't know. Bebe, those beautiful eyes of yours surely saw a beautiful stranger, especially an American. Do you remember a guy at the Alembic going by the name of Paul Eaton? It's funny you mention it. Another detective came and asked me the same thing a few days ago. Good looking bloke, that P.I., nice mustache. Yes, yes, I remember Eaton. He was hanging out with the Alembic crowd last month. seen anything of Paul Eaton since. No point getting all jealous, Mac. You're the only American in my heart. I've not seen Eaton here again. And as for Albert, the owner, I have no idea. I suspect Paul pulled off the scam of the century and fled to Borneo. everything you know about Paul Eaton. And I warn you, everything he has told you is probably lies. I think his name is also a fake. He was not very chatty, Polly boy. 
I must say, he did not speak French very well. All I got was that he was in Paris with his sister, who I never saw. He hinted once or twice that they were onto something big, loads of cash, easy work. You know, Mac, now that I think of it, Paul Eaton was definitely the dodgy type. Berenice, I think I'd better warn you. This Paul Eaton is mixed up in some dirty business. I just hope the boss, Albert, did not trust Eaton too much. Paul and old man Hulu? Of course they know each other. They even got really chummy. Hulot, the boss? Is he there? Maybe he noticed some things that you missed, baby. You know, you might have been too busy staring at that tall, dark American to notice anything peculiar about him. Albert is not here. I was supposed to meet him here this morning, but he's not come by today. You know, Mac, Albert Hulot has not changed. He is as weird as ever. If I see him, I will tell him you're looking for him. Bebe, I need a small favor. I have to infiltrate the Brotherhood, and I need a fake letter of introduction. Can you write me one using this letter? No problem. Come by later, your letter will be ready. Strange front door, an improved version of all the other locks I've come across so far.
Mac. I'm going to start thinking you can't do without me. Did I forget something at your place? Bebe, I need the letter of introduction. Is it finished? Here it is. As I have already told you several times, sir, you cannot obtain any information here. As the doorman, I'm responsible for the security of the premises. thinking you can't do without me. Did I forget something at your place? Baby, I need a small favor. I have to infiltrate the Brotherhood, and I need a fake letter of introduction. Can you write me one using these documents? Again? Right. Come and see me later. Your letter will be ready. 